1960, Mario Bava created the most magnificent and wonderful event of chiaroscuro since the 1940s, which was La Mascara del Demonio, or The Mask of Satan, or Revenge of the Vampire, or Black Sunday, depending on what English-speaking world you came from. In it, he introduced us his obsession with doubles and with twins and with revenge. And revenge is something that permeates all of Italian neo-Gothic, especially when it comes to women and witches being the unjust victims of male prosecution in an era where burning and masks with devil spikes were hammered into the faces of beautiful people. May the cleansing flames reduce her foul body to ashes so that the wind will obliterate all trace of her existence. Black Sunday introduces us to the beauty and the wonder that is the angular, non-Euclidean features of Barbara Steele as a young woman who plays a double role where she is at once seductive and innocent, where she is at once revolting and beautiful, and where she is at once alive and dead. And as she tells us, as the witch Arza, you will be dead to men, yet alive in death, before she seduces Professor Kruvayan. At the end of the 1950s, with the inception by Riccardo Frida of a new genre of film, the Italian neo-Gothic, we ended up with a maestro of Italian horror film and neo-Gothic, Mario Bava. Mario Bava's first and most wonderful poetic lamentation to witches and to the beauty that is inherent in repulsion was Black Sunday, but he also followed up this masterpiece of chiaroscuro with The Whip and the Body, which was his hyper-coloured, almost cartoonish nightmare of sadomasochistic eroticism. Look into my eyes. Embrace me. You will die, but I can bring you pleasures mortals cannot know. Another curiosity about Black Sunday is that in all of its many translations as Revenge of the Vampire, Black Sunday and Mask of the Demon or La Mascara del Demonio, which is a masculine version of Satan, we get an absolute coalescence of every monster. We have a witch, but she's also a demon and she's also a vampire and there's a little bit of vampirism in the film and it's almost like um, Baba has gone into a pick and mix ecstatic world of using all of the beautiful cliches, the bats and the professor and the gorgeous innocent and the double twin possessed woman. And he's just said, I want everything. Mario Bava seems absorbed with the whole phantasmatic world of a strange Slavic Gothicism in the same way that Hammer seemed to set all of their horror films in a phantasmatic Bavaria. Bava has taken Nikolai Gogol's V and claimed to adapt it into this film and yet it bears no resemblance to the story whatsoever.